This is the between part 15. We are beginning the mastermind threat today. Today we begin facing uh, and possibly stopping Theodora Brathwaite. And so there's really no threat recapping to do. Um, last time you resolved the spider silk seamstress. And so that is taken care of. And I do want to do just a quick conditions check on all the hunters. Um, lots of drawn to the void, <laughs> except for the person who wanted it. And then we have um, additionally, Dr. Tagore has ghoulish and Solomon's wisdom. Mr. Janadios additionally has most beloved and Willoughby has, does not have Drawn to the Void, but does have the Sons of Another World and Nauseous. You can probably go ahead and clear Nauseous. I think that'll probably be cleared by the time we pick up, so. I think I actually should have cleared it last time from the drinking, but there oh, might have yeah, been another probably. Nauseous condition after that, given the <laughs> state yeah. of last week. There's no telling. Um, okay, you can clear it now. And so. Let's just talk about the presentation of the mastermind threat. So last few days, the papers have been carrying some very salacious stories about Queen Victoria. This is something they don't normally do, but they're doing it now because apparently she's come down with some sort of illness this illness makes her not want to be in sunlight. And it has, according to the reporting, made her appetite very strange. Now, a sick royal is nothing to get too concerned about just because there is a, an institution and a lines of succession, but nevertheless, people are worried about the queen. And so, the intriguing thing is that it has been decided that Queen Victoria just needs a little bit of fresh country air. And so her dear friend, a one Ms. Theodora Brathwaite has invited Queen Victoria to come stay at her country residence, Brathwaite Hall for as long as she needs. And the queen has accepted this invitation and is currently in residence at Brathwaite Hall, recovering from this strange illness she has come down with. Of course, you all know what's really going on because and this is for viewers of the video. If you didn't watch the stinger last time, you should go do that now. Um, because in last episode's end of credits scene, we learned Lord White watched Theodora and the Limehouse Lurker complete the process of changing Queen Victoria into a vampire. She is a vampire. You all know this, but the general public does not. So Theodora's scheme is probably pretty straightforward. It's very hard to overthrow the British Empire if you just assassinate whoever's on the throne because they'll just replace them with someone else. But if you change the queen into a blood-sucking monstrosity, that has much more potential for creating chaos. And within that chaos, she will be able to step into. And, uh, and as we've been told before, chaos is a ladder, right? So Theodora will, will make good on that. In any case, there might be more to her scheme, but that the crux of it is changing Queen Victoria into a vampire. Now, Hargrave House, where does Hargrave House get involved here? Well, it's an open question until you receive a visitor one night, and we're gonna actually have that scene. You're all there, maybe fretting over this current political circumstances, having a drink, in the salon at Hargrave House. When there's a ring at the door. Ding, 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 ding.
Everyone will turn to look at Willoughby, I imagine. <laughs> Willoughby got stuck in the chat. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> um, uh, Willoughby runs brusquely, realizing the delay, and opens the door. Good evening. You open the door to see the man in the sun mask standing there at your door. He is wearing his long yellow silk uh, kimono and sort of velvet smoking pants and slippers. And of course, this mask that is the sun, a sun face mask over his face. You didn't hear a carriage roll up and you don't even see a carriage outside. And the man in the sun mask says, it's very good to see you again, Willoughby. Can I come in? Of, of course. I mean, you do know about, I, of course, of course, come, come in. He steps into the salon where everyone is. And I'm curious just everyone's reaction. What's everyone doing? I've never met him, so I'm probably taking my cues from the other people's reactions. So I'm probably just studying people's faces very closely. Just about to ask, I'm trying to remember where we met him. Uh, he hangs out at Jenny Johnston's Opium Den. Oh, okay. Yeah. He was a significant side character in that threat before that threat got taken off the table. So. Yeah. And also opened Willoughby's minds to the, or mind to the possibility of other worlds. Got it. All right. Uh, Willoughby fusses about making some sort of, would you like a drink, sir? No, that's quite all right, thank you. Drinking yes, I imagine... things is inconvenient. Yes, I, I realize that now. Um, well. I do hope you'll forgive my strange appearance. It's very important that people in London don't see me for who I really am. I'm a very highly placed official in the British government perhaps even a member of the royal family who could say, and it's very important that people don't know who I am. And so I have to obscure my identity. Gentlemen Please. and Lord White, would it not be prudent to perhaps discuss the queen's health? It, we can trust this person, although if they are running in high society, I probably know them already. Oh, well, you don't know anybody who goes about the sun mask, so. <laughs> well, but beneath that, I must know. Maybe. He's not taking the mask off to show you, so. Uh, regrettably, I don't recall how I should address you, sir, a moniker for perhaps a distant son. Very, very, very amusing. No, you don't need to worry about my name. It's not important for our purposes. Well, then may I introduce Lord White, just returned, uh, recently took up in, um, oh, did you hear of Mr. Ives and his fate? I did not hear it, but I was able to observe it. It was most, well, shocking. Oh, that's right. You're not tethered to this plane, generally speaking. I just have lots of access, Willoughby. Dr. Tagore, Mr. Genadius, I don't know if we've actually met, although I do know who you are. He goes and makes himself comfortable. Naturally. I'm just gonna... I don't know, watching and getting the lay of the land here. Well, the reason why I've come is because of this situation with our dear, dear Queen Victoria. I have a story to tell you. Many centuries ago, during ancient Roman times, there was a group of people from Rome. They had a bit of an issue with the sun. They suffered from 
an affliction with which I know you're all very familiar, vampirism. They called themselves the, the orphans of Apollo because they could no longer be within the sun's warmth. They came here to England, which at that time was just a far-flung territory of the Roman Empire, a wilderness mostly, but they came here because of the gloomy climate, thinking they might be able to make a more normal life for themselves. And they began to search for a cure to their condition. Now, no one really knows what happened to them, whether they discovered the cure or not. They say they had a temple or a, of sorts, a temple dedicated to their estranged father, Apollo, located underground in the cave system. Now, as I said, we don't know what happened to them, but rumors suggest they did eventually discover the cure for vampirism and they rejoined society. And here's the really interesting detail for our purposes here tonight. Their temple is beneath Brathwaite Hall. The very location where our dear afflicted Queen Victoria is resting and recuperating and the home of one of your nemeses. I myself, have been invited to spend a week at Brathwaite Hall, and I am taking Ms. Brathwaite up on that invitation. Lord White, you always have a standing invitation, of course, and I can bring two guests, and I choose you, Mr. Genadios and Dr. Tagore. That is very kind, but uh, I am a bit of a traditionalist, and I have found that the Traditional cure for vampirism is generally effective. I believe it's a wooden stake. Yes, yes, that is one way of handling the situation. But I think the situation is probably more complicated than that, Mr. Genadios. For starters, the queen being murdered would be quite an issue and create an undue amount of tumult within the British Empire. And if the circumstances of Queen Victoria's condition were to get out, it would be pure chaos. It would plunge the empire. Well, it could destroy it. It could bring it down completely. Now, a cure empire's is the solution. Fall. And empires fall. And you would know this but it's not quite time for this one to fall. I don't generally fancy adding regicide to my list of crimes, um, accomplishments. Um, Dr. Tagore, whatever will we do about your sister? What do you mean? Am I to care for her here while you go and walk away oh. to her caves or whatever she, it is? She's fairly self-sufficient at this point. I feel like uh, we can probably leave her here on her own. Bring her along. She could be Lord White's lady's maid. I don't know if you've... If you've... I don't think you've met my sister. Uh, I have not met her, but I've sensed her. She is a pillar of creative energy, a practical well. She is that. Um, she's not accustomed to social engagements yet at this point. So uh, I don't know. What do you think, Lord White? Do you need a, uh, an unusual handmaid? I think in matters when we must protect the queen, all help should be taken up. All right, then I'll, uh, I'll talk with her and, and uh, bring her along. I think we're going to have a splendid week. And 
he gets up and says, you can call on me at Brathwaite Hall as you need. I am not the social type and will be spending most of my time in my rooms there. Good luck. The fate of the British Empire depends on you. And he excuses himself. And the question here is very simple. How does one cure vampirism? Answering the question resolve, unlocks the opportunity to resolve the threat by curing Queen Victoria. After that, you can deal with Theodora and the Lurker however you wish. <laughs> so. That's fun. I, I imagine if like he had said that a whole bunch of people had ostensibly been cured and entered society. So maybe we could find one of those people or a descendant of them or something. That would maybe, be fun. Yeah. But yeah, the idea I think is that this group, the, the orphans of Apollo, they were on Theodora's land, right? Theodora might even know about them, right? It might be why she's there. It might be how she concocted the scheme in the first place. And maybe they left behind some evidence of how to, of how they beat their condition, if they did. And also before we go, is it um, possible to do my Explore Club move to get uh, an armory scene? Oh yeah, I think that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, if you want to mark one, absolutely. We do have some special rules here um, Mm -hmm. for this mastermind threat. Because it doesn't take place in London, we don't have the normal um, four phase structure. There will be no specific day or night phases. Uh, There will be no unseen. It will be much more like a traditional role playing game in that way. There's only going to be one dawn phase for purposes of collecting experience points and that is at the conclusion of the threat. So probably next week. And you can only bring three items from your personal quarters with you to Brathwaite Hall. Go ahead and choose those now. What's everyone bringing? I'm bringing a mystical staff, a little black book on the upper crust, and the that special mass that allows me to see colors more vividly. I've got Mr. Turner's silver blade, the Waitley camera, and a flawless suit of Fay creation. Oh, the Waitley camera. That would be fun to introduce into the into the proceedings. <laughs> I am bringing a very old journal, a pistol, and a silver monocle that can see through disguises and find hidden clues. All right, and I am going to bring Sally No Face's scalpel. Um, the sixth and seventh book of Moses, that grimoire, and uh, uh, Mr. Turner's uh, Blood of a Dark Entity from his Witch Cupboard. Wow, very good. Lots of powerful stuff coming to Brathwaite Hall. That's good. And you said you wanted to do the Royal Explorers Club, yeah, Lord White? Yeah, um, it says I have to do it at the dusk phase, I think. You can do it now, it's fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Since we're not doing the traditional phase structure. Um, and so let's talk about who this is. The person who can, who can give you access to the unusual armory is Rear Admiral Alfred Bingley Green. <laughs> Jowly, quiet, and eyes that have seen things. <laughs> um, so 
It says the Rear Admiral is a former member of Hargrave House and has an unmatched collection of specialized weapons he collected from his time there. He is happy to give you access to them from time to time. Each hunter adds a specialized weapon to their personal quarters. You can pick from the list or write your own. The weapon must be removed from personal quarters once it is marked. So here's the list. Silver bullets, a cold iron sword, wooden stake launcher, <laughs> holy water bombs, um, a sword cane, uh, just a fuck ton of dynamite, a razor rosary, cow traps, a balisong, or like a butterfly knife, a trick umbrella, <laughs> a set of vicious dogs, an elephant gun, runic gauntlets, an exploding pocket watch, poison spectacles, an acid pen, metal claws, saltpeter gun, a hex bag, or flash powder, or anything else you want that you can think of. But that list is there on Lord White's character sheet if you want to go over it. But everyone gets something. And Lord White, you have to mark the Royal Explorers Club. I'll probably take holy water bombs if it works on vampires. <laughs> that sounds fun. I don't see a use for it, but I want a fountain pen full of acid. <laughs> take it. <laughs> Why don't you just sign this accord? Oh, fuck. <laughs> We will not be signing any accords with Lady Brathwaite. That is not going to happen. Well, I mean, presumably it would be a trick because it's an acid pen. <laughs> I'm curious, the saltpeter gun, like saltpeter is an ingredient in gunpowder, I think, but not all of it. What does saltpeter do by itself? I don't know. It's up to you to figure it out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's not like a peppermint. That's what it is, <laughs> like, though. <laughs> Once you start tying it in fairy twine or thread, and then you can start to add like magical bomb components. Like, <laughs> and is it up to us to define what a trick umbrella does? Yes. All right, Drew, what were you going to say? After uh, Alexander's declaration, how could he not take the uh, wooden stake launcher? Launcher, yeah. Very Van Helsing. Oh, yes. I'm trying to imagine the Victorian repeater trying to get all the stakes to go through. <laughs> I feel like I'll bring the saltpeter gun and figure out some use for it. Are you leaving Dottie at Hargrave House or bringing her? Uh, I think we're bringing her along, right? Okay. Isn't that the consensus? Right. Sounds good. Does she get an item? Uh, no, but she's she's there. <laughs> she, she's very good at holding things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pic wow. picturing her kind of still getting used to, to life and fiddling with the trick umbrella and like you know the yeah. back of a cap. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Good. All right. So everyone is ready to go to Brathwaite Hall and try to figure out how to cure Queen Victoria's vampirism. And so, let's begin. We'll just introduce the setting a little bit first. Brathwaite Hall, of course, is a very large, multi-story English country home. There are a number of points of interest, essentially. And I think you probably spend the whole first day and night just kind of meeting all the other people who are there for the week, sort of getting the lay of the land, you know, hanging out with Theodora, sort of just figuring things out. You never see Queen Victoria at all that whole first day and night, but you know she's there. And so the relevant locations, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll paste these on the thread during a break, but for now, there is the hunting grounds, which are kind of on the estate. 
the gardens, which immediately surround the house. There's the entry hall to the house. There's a grand salon, a library, a music room, uh, various bedrooms and living quarters, uh, a kitchen and servants quarter, and according to the man in the sun mask, somewhere beneath the house or beneath the land, there's a temple to the, to the god Apollo. <laughs> so who knows where that is. Um, finding it might be one of your the business of the day. There are other characters here to be aware of. And again, I'll update the, the, the mystery on our first, uh, our first break. But we have Queen Victoria, of course, and Theodora, of course. Theodora's daughter, uh, Tatiana, is there. And we have John Brown, who is the Queen's Scottish manservant. And everyone pretty much knows at this point that also is the Queen's lover, <laughs> um, she, the Queen being a longtime widow at this point. Um, we have Elsie, who is a sort of general maid and dog's body at Brathwaite Hall. We have Elmore, Theodora's incredibly loyal uh, ancient butler. We have Avery Mills, a reporter from the Press and Journal. Theodora has invited a journalist over for the week. <laughs> Can't imagine why, <laughs> but that is what she's done. We have um, Clara Barton, a nurse from the United States is here. Um, you can learn more about her as we go. Toddy Brathwaite has two of her friends also from the United States, Taffy and Topper Worthington, uh, twin brothers and heirs to uh, an industrial uh, fortune. And of course, the man in the sun mask. Oh, and the Queen's Spaniel Dash as well is there for the week. So an eccentric collection of people um, in all told. And yeah, I think when you first arrive, the first day is mostly just spent getting settled in, maybe taking tea with Theodora, kind of meeting the other people as they arrive. And the first night there's a dinner and it's all very cordial and very chatty and um, nothing too, too uh, it's a little too early to start getting into the, the dark business that you're there for. No one sees Queen Victoria, although she's mentioned a few times during conversation. Um, according to Theodora, she's recovering beautifully. And so that's sort of how the first day goes, just pleasantries, getting the lay of the land and meeting everyone. And so it's the second day that we're really concerned with in terms of getting the gameplay going. Everyone settled in to their room. Willoughby, you have uh, what's essentially a large walk-in closet next to, oh no, you're down in the servants' quarters. You're down in the servants' quarters along with Elmore and Elsie. And the rest of you though, have your own rooms. Uh, Dottie uh, is, Dottie is in a walk-in closet next to Lord White's <laughs> room. <laughs> so, the, but she's spent, all of her life in such places, so I think she'll be okay. And so, yeah, breakfast is taken uh, downstairs. Everyone goes to have breakfast together. Um, Lord White, you have the option of having breakfast in bed if you wish, but, uh, and Theodora does, but you have the option of going downstairs with the men or staying upstairs and having your breakfast in bed. It's up to you. What do you think, Lord White? Uh, if Dottie needs to eat, I'd probably take it upstairs and then give her some to eat so she could survive. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, Toddie Brathwaite, uh, as an unmarried woman, takes her uh, young woman takes her breakfast downstairs as well. And so, yeah, I think I just want to start with sort of figuring out where everyone is like 
Mr. Janadios, do you show up after everyone else for breakfast or do you get there first? Definitely after, fashionably after. Dr. Tagore. Everyone will have to stop and look. Dr. Tagore, I imagine you're the first one down there, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Indeed. English country breakfast, you can't miss that. Um, let's just have the scene with Willoughby and Mr. Janadias kind of getting ready for the day, I think. I think that'd be nice. Um, take it away. Are you enjoying the country air? Slept well last night? Oh, like a log. <laughs> if the log were up every three hours to make sure there wasn't a miniature vampire stalking. I thought it, that I caught that you were on edge. I don't know where that little, do you suppose he's in the basement or in the temple? Um, or perhaps between the walls. It's oh. safe to take anything for granted here. That does make my skin crawl. I start, I offer out his jacket, each arm. Just wait until you meet the little bugger. He'll slip in and straighten his neck to have the, the tie tightened. And Will it be actually ties it just a little bit tighter than usual to like make sure you can't slip a fang in? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Lord White, you are awakened by Elsie, the maid. Um, she has your breakfast and she, she pulls open the drapes around the, 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 the sort of like canopy bed, you know, and she says, uh, good morning, ma'am, uh, I have your breakfast. That's for Lord White. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I, I hope you brought a little bit extra. I'm famished. Oh, uh, well, I can, uh, I, can certainly, I can certainly get you more if you need it. Oh, absolutely. I, I, the, the trip was quite taxing. She sort of like sets the tray in your lap and she's doing all the little things. And she says, um, I have to apologize. Uh, the, the, the marmalade is store-bought. We didn't have time to, 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 to get any preserves down from the cellar uh, that, were, that, were, that were ready. Um, they, well, they had gone a bit off. Um, I hope that's not too much trouble. All marmalade is good. That's what I say. And she's, you know, kind of laying things out for you and asking how you like your tea and kind of doing all that stuff, right? And then I think we hear just like, some clumsy noise coming from the, the large walk-in closet. <laughs> and Elsie says, oh my, what's, what's, what's that? Oh, nothing at all. Probably just a walking stick I always bring falling down. Lord White, you should know. I, my lips are sealed. I won't say anything. If you have a man in there, it's okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell anyone. You're, you're an independent woman, a noble woman. You should be able to do whatever you want. What a dependable person you are. And I wake at her. And she, she, and, um, and she, she takes, she, she, she takes leave. Uh, you know, she kind of, Make sure the fire is 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 still going and everything's kind of good. She would have come in earlier to to light it, and opens the windows, all that stuff. And we hear just like this noisy thrashing coming from the walk-in closet. She's just like, uh, and she leaves. I guess she knows why I requested more food now too. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Tagore, you're the first one down for breakfast. Um, it's in the dining room. Uh, all the large tall windows a whole wall of them are uh, the curtains are open and so there's fresh morning sunlight sort of pouring in and you see Elmore an impossibly old butler uh, there at a large buffet table and I mean, he's very old 
uh, just like hunched over, withered like a prune. And he sees you and says, good morning, sir. I says, of course, English gentlemen serve themselves during breakfast, but I am happy to assist if you need to know the precise contents of one of the dishes, or if you would like to know where you should sit. Oh, guidance on where to sit, given the array of company might be, might be useful, but I can certainly serve myself uh, uh, a bit of breakfast. That's easy enough. He says, very good. I recommend you sit right here. Young Ms. Brathwaite and her friends, they like to sit at one end of the table and they can be rather merciless with their remarks. And um, I think someone like you would probably want to be sitting rather far away from them. Got it. Um, I'm going to, uh, you know, on a kind of a plain saucer, crack uh, crack open an egg and carefully kind of ladle out some yolk, uh, trying to draw an allusion to the sun as a, a symbol and kind of pull the yolk out into a little radiating sun shape and, and nonchalantly make sure that Elmore sees it and say, uh, Elmore, it seems you've, you've been at Brathwaite Hall uh, an incredibly long time. I'm sure you know a lot of the history. And, Says, Make sure he sees this little sun yolk. Says, that's, that's very amusing, sir. I, uh, yes, I have. And when I am not on duty, I'd be happy to talk to you about it. Now, please, your breakfast here is here. The plates are there. Ah, and here is our next guest. And at this point, Avery Mills, the reporter, comes in. He's also very early to breakfast. And... Elmore chastises him because he's not really dressed for breakfast. Um, he's uh, kind of just in plain trousers and uh, plain trousers and vest and tie, not like, um, uh, doesn't look very well presentable in terms of, you know, things being wrinkled and stuff like that. And Elmore says something like, ah, Mr. Mills, if you needed assistance dressing for breakfast, you should let us know so that we can help you in this matter. I'll let it slide today. <clears throat> and Mr. Mills gets his breakfast. Eventually, Toddy and Taffy and Topper all show up. Uh, Toddy Brathwaite, she uh, she dresses in men's clothing, much like you, Lord White, sometimes. And uh, she's wearing like a very fashionable sort of men's suit when she comes down. Um, she is Theodora's adopted daughter. She's white, uh, for starters. And Taffy and Topper are uh, tall, broad-shouldered, kind of... Uh, tall, broad-shouldered, heads of blonde hair, very like kind of uh, upper crust. And they all come in and they're laughing and chatting about something. And Tati gets her breakfast and she throws a fork on the ground and says, oh, Elmore, would you get that? And then she, goes and sits down and then they laugh while Elmore very like gingerly, agedly bends down to grab the fork. And they sit down and they're exchanging pleasantries. And I think that's it for breakfast. Um, everybody else is either dealing with the queen possibly or not coming down, but in any case, Mr. Jadius and Willoughby, you can show up at this point. Alexander will come in with a, a polite nod to everyone as if they already know who he is. And sit down next to Dr. Tagore. Willoughby goes about making a plate of breakfast for Mr. Janadius. Now, Willoughby, you have, a, you have a history with Tatiana Brathwaite, do you not? 
I do. And she has not either not recognized me for the whole day and a half I've been here, or I've been kind of strategically avoiding being in the same room as her, being downstairs, trying to keep from drinking anything Elmore gives me. Remind us of the history with Tatiana. We knew each other when we were young. My family lives in a state five miles down the road and through some unforeseen circumstances became employed by Mr. Gennadios. So we knew each other when we were maybe teenagers, somewhere in that age, maybe 14, 15. But you would have been like social equals at that time, right? Yes, that's correct. I think that I like the idea she grew up and just is completely oblivious to the staff. She's already tormenting Elnor, so she just hasn't ever made eye contact with me, so doesn't recognize me. (laughs) Yeah, I like that. What name would she know you by? She wouldn't call you Willoughby. No, no, no. William. William. Dead names. (laughs) Indeed. She says, my goodness, William, is that you? Tati, I thought you'd never, ever notice. Well, that's Miss Brathwaite, but yes. And she says, what are you doing here? Are you... Guest, and what are you wearing? I wear what I like, at Miss Brathwaite. I am in the employ of Mr. Gennadios here. In the employ of Mr. Gennadios. How interesting. What a strange journey you must have had, William. Mr. Gennadios, I don't know if you know this or not, but your servant, and I used to be, well, we used to be chums when we were little. I have heard many things about you, Tatiana. Tell you all of them good, I hope. You know what they say about hope? It's what kills. <laughs> is, um, oh, you're very clever, Mr. Genavius. Very clever indeed. And she sort of goes back to her breakfast. Um, uh, Topper Worthington leans over to you, Mr. Genadios, and says, so, um, Mr. Genadios, um, what do you do in London? Oh, I keep myself busy. Who might you be? Oh, um, well, my brother and I, uh, we are, well, we're, we're from America, uh, our we, our father runs a little shipping business um, that is making ships and other uh, things. Um, and Taffy says, oh, he's being, he's being, um, he's being coy. Dadikin's made a huge fortune during the Civil War. Oh, how, how quaint. Oh, and Topper says, Are you one of those English people who finds money off-putting and talking about money off-putting? Oh, no, not at all. Money is quite useful and is very good to have. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, It's like, um, you know, some people are born with fantastic athletic talent and some people are, they have brilliant minds and others are born with lots of money. And I'm not sure why anyone should feel guilty about that. Everyone has their advantages and disadvantages. Yes. Uh, Philosophy seems to be one of yours. Tati says, Mr. Genadios is very clever. I've had lots of time to practice. Tatiana drops her napkin on the floor and says, William, would you be a dear and grab that for me? I'm afraid that's not my name, Miss Brathwaite. And I serve Mr. Gennadios. Hmm. Elmore <laughs> and Dr. DeGore, what are you doing during all this time? No one seems to be paying much attention to you. Um, let me ask a, a quick game question uh, out of character here. Are we... Um, do we need clues to solve anything? Yeah, the complexity is 10. 
so the, okay all right so we do need to dig up clues um i'm kind of uh, you know nibbling on my my ham or whatever uh uh sipping tea but um kind of scouting the room for any signs of i don't know uh Apollo, uh, how do you say that? Apollonian, Ap Apollonian temples. How do you say it? <laughs> Apollolytic. <laughs> Apollolytic. Yes. Um. Anyway, so like any signs, like stuff carved in the wood, uh, uh some stone in the hearth, anything sure, that sort of shows yeah. some of that. I, yeah, that's time. a great idea. Do the information move with uh with reason. All right. What do I have to. If Ooh, Mr. Gennadios okay. is willing to dismiss Willoughby back downstairs, I might be able to do some digging there as well. Gotcha. I just got a seven. Of course. Seven, good. We'll come back to that. Um, and Mr. Gennadios, you do dismiss Willoughby. Yes. Lord White, how does... So Dottie doesn't need to eat. <laughs> oh, she doesn't? So, no. <laughs> <laughs> but that you but you all bad. feed her just as a sort of like you know just to make her seem more normal i guess <laughs> um, yeah well and also it would have been a decent ruse anyway to let the maid come to the conclusion that she did yeah instead yeah. of looking in the closet and finding Dottie. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Um, um i think when the when i'm done eating and the maid is gone i'd probably go snooping um I'm not sure what, how we would instruct Dottie, though. Like, she she can't really... Could she come with me? I don't know. Uh, sure, yeah, if you wanted to. She's gotten yeah. a little better with communication and stuff in the, in the days and weeks that have passed since her creation. Maybe we'll try to go places where there aren't many people like the gardens and things like that to, to snoop about first. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, when you go to get her, um, she's been trying to like dress herself and it's, been, it's a bit of a mess, to be honest. Um, oh, I'll help. Are, yeah, you can kind of help her get ready. And she says to you, she says, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I made a mess. Oh. This is to be expected. There's an adjustment period for all changes. And so that's that's kind of happening. Willoughby, where do you head after you're dismissed? I would head back downstairs, uh, below stairs, to see if I could perhaps meet uh, Jean Brown, the Queen's manservant in oh, passing, yeah, or kind of see yeah. um, who else on staff might have whispers or secret passages in the back of pantries, that kind of thing. Yeah, you'll find John Brown down there. Um, turns out Queen Victoria doesn't need much during the day. <laughs> um, she sleeps a lot during the day, and it's best that way. Um, he's down there. So he's, he's not looking pale or discolored in any way. He's looking pretty um, lively. Yeah, he's kind of silver-haired, bushy beard. He's handsome and, and middle-aged, kind of handsome Color guy. in his cheeks. <laughs> yeah, 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 color in his cheeks. He does seem a little stressed out. Um, yeah. and he'll say, ah, uh, uh, Willoughby, right? Yes. Good, good. Uh, I can't, I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, Mr. Brown. Uh, John Brown is my name. Um, the Queen's man servant. Yes, yes. I, I was told it's very nice to meet you. Yes. Are you all right, sir? Well, I'm just, um, I'm a little, uh, you, you've, heard of course the rumors of the queen's illness i'm just a little a little um stressed out about that i know too well what it is to uh and willoughby kind of pauses thinking about how often nope hasn't really sacrificed much in order to serve mr Gennadio. so just kind of trails off <laughs> mm -hmm. it must be it must be difficult i could understand is there anything i can do to be of help uh, no, no. Uh, uh, the nurse, Ms. Barton, uh, the one from America, she's been doing a very, very good job tending to the Queen. It was very lucky, in fact, that Ms. Barton was even in London. Um, and of course, I don't know if you know, but she has something of a reputation uh, from 
uh, her time attending to the wounded in the American Civil War. And uh, well, we heard she was here looking for money for some project of hers, I think. And she agreed to come look after the queen for a bit. We're very that lucky. Is a spot of good luck, it is. Um, well, are you, uh, I, uh, please call on me if there's anything I can do to be of assistance, if there's anything I can do to help. I don't know my way around Brathwaite all that well. Um, anything else that? No, uh, no, no, but I, I, I thank you for your, for your generous uh, offer, uh, Willoughby. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of move through the halls. Yeah, indeed. Dr. Gore, As I'm moving it? around downstairs, yeah. would I be able to investigate to see if there are doors that of look? Yeah. That just, I'd love to do an information move. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to it. Thank you. Dr. Tagore, I owe you a clue. Dr. Tagore, looking around the room, you notice that things in sets of three are missing. There should be three candlesticks evenly placed on the table, but one is missing. There were three portraits hanging on the wall, but one has been removed and you can see where the wallpaper is faded from where it used to be. You'll notice that there's a clock in the corner of the room and the number three has been pried off the face of it. A strange thing, as well as the number six, the number nine. Well, multiples too, interesting. Yeah. All right, definitely not gonna count on my fingers just to... <laughs> <laughs> That's your clue though. And I think you're probably having to like kind of get up and walk around the room a little bit to notice some of these details especially the clock. And while that's going on, while you're doing that, Tatiana says, Dr. Tagore, are you going to be joining us for the hunt this afternoon? You know, it's not it's not a thing that I would typically do, but it sounds like it might be entertaining. I'd be curious. You don't have an ethical concern with taking life, do you, Dr. Togo? Oh, I'm more, more one to uh, bring it back. Uh, that's, that's kind of where my interest is, is expanding rather than taking life. How interesting. Take a little nibble of my ham sandwich. And then Taffy says... Dr. Tagore, there was a woman in your party yesterday when you arrived, and we haven't seen her since, but you seem to be very, um, you were doting on her a bit. Um, who, who is she? Goodness. Um, she's a, a relative. Uh recently returned from uh, some travels that uh, uh, she's recovering from. So she's not, not quite herself now. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. It's like your poor queen, not exactly. feeling herself. <clears throat> very much the same. And yeah, so the conversation's taken kind of an awkward turn here. The energy of the room has changed a bit. Mr. Genadios, what do you do? This hunt, uh, retalking foxes. I haven't been on a good fox hunt in ages. Tati says, oh, we have some very, very special game for the hunt today. Fascinating. I am intrigued. You very well should be, Mr. Genavios. 
<sighs> Mother disapproves, of course, but uh, she never goes in the hunts. What we get up to is none of her business. Well, that's a shame. It would be lovely to catch up with your mother. We haven't had much time to uh, reacquaint ourselves. All week. We have all week, and she's very, very interested in you, Mr. Genadios, if I should be so bold as to say. Well, we have a bit of history. Where, uh, what is keeping her occupied at this time? Well, she always takes her breakfast in a room, and she spends most of the morning always dealing with her business affairs, and she'll come down later today. She might even come out to the hunting grounds for the, for the picnic. How lovely. Let's take a five minute break. Okay, I've updated the thread sheet just so we can kind of see, uh, see your, your side characters and clues you've collected so far. Lord White, you're in the garden. The gardens surrounding the house with Dottie. And I was, I was thinking I'd dress up- periodically and looking at flowers, right? I was thinking I'd dress up Dottie in uh, widow's garments so that she might not be approached, but could still accompany places. Okay, interesting. So she's kind of wearing a black veil. <laughs> yeah, black black all around, and then people won't have to. Yeah, maybe maybe, and I'm imagining it's very loose and flowing, right? So it might accompany any jerky moments, uh, movements, oh, or anything. Yeah, sure. Yeah, or cover them up. Yeah. Um, so what's your approach here? What are you looking for? Um, I guess just, is, is there like a, a maze in the gardens or any, is there, um, I don't know, particular flowers that are, um, I like the idea of a hedge maze. That'd be fun. Let's do that. Yeah. I love mazes, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll take the maze and see if there's anything at the center. Awesome. Do the information move with reason. All righty. Reason. Oh, the, my worst stat. Excellent. Minus one. A nine. You're going to find your clue, but you're going to lose Dottie in the maze. Oh, no. And so your clue. You reach the center of the maze to find Theodora there, sitting on a little bench, reading a book. She says, Lord White, you found the center of the maze. How very clever you are. Well, I, I do like to run a maze from time to time. And you've just been waiting here the whole time for me? What patience you have. I didn't know you were going to be here. And she closes the book she's reading and puts it away next to her and says, are you enjoying your stay so far? Oh yes, it's been quite refreshing. The food has been above board. Dreadful business with the queen. Hmm? Oh, yes, dreadful. My, my hand clutches very tightly. <laughs> <laughs> she says, well, of course, I feel partially responsible for her condition. And so I had to have her here. It felt like my, my civic duty to help her recover. You're saying it wasn't your design? <laughs> well to help her recover, or perhaps to help her get accustomed to her new state. I can't imagine the queen in such a state being anything but a terrible blight to everybody. It was probably a very big mistake you had undertaken there. You should Come with me and the boy tonight. We are going to 
give the queen a lesson in how to satisfy her new urges. And mechanically, I can't attack her really, right? <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, and and that, not until threat's resolved. Yeah, I mean, you can't kill her or anything, but yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm staring daggers, that's for sure. <laughs> she says, um, you have nothing to fear, of course. And she gets up and says, here, I have this for you. And she pulls out of her pocket a pendant that is that has a sapphire on it, much like the sapphire she wears on her throat. She says, I don't really understand the process, but the boy and people like him and like our new queen, they, they won't bite you if you're wearing the sapphire. They can't even go in the rooms that are decorated with the color. So why protect me? <laughs> because you're my guest. It's a family heirloom. Looks quite similar to your own. Well, let's just say I've had a long time to study these people. One of these days, I will get a beat on you, you know. Perhaps, but I don't think it's going to be in the next few days. And that's your clue. The vampires can't bite you if you're wearing the sapphire. And she, she, she suggests the color, not just the gem. But, yeah. Robes Judas was wearing when he hung. But in any case, let's cut back over to Willoughby. So Willoughby, you're down in the servants' quarters. Then what? Well, and also, by the way, Lord White, Dotty, nowhere to be found <laughs> during that whole time. <laughs> I turn into a pantry. Dotty, what are you doing here? No, um, I really would like to spend a little bit of time kind of looking through the downstairs and I want to identify what places might be older than the rest of the house or um, potentially lead to sunken stairs or I feel like I want to look down mostly. <laughs> I love it. To the information move with reason again. Could one make the argument that a silver monocle would give me advantage if I'm looking through, oh, looking, for, looking like for hidden things? Little yeah. crevices mm -hmm. and stuff, sure. If you want to mark it, I go just, for it. That is 11. Nice. With reason. Yep. Excellent. On the wrong sheet. Well, it's 11 uh, plus one, 12. Okay, awesome. Uh, in the mastermind threat, 12 plus doesn't do anything, but, uh, but 10 plus is good. So you're going to find a clue. We'll come back to your clue in a moment. Oh, and here I need to remind everyone or tell you all, I didn't remind you because I didn't say it at all. But we have an aspect of the Janus mask available during this threat. It's the mask of the sun again. So breakfast is done, Mr. Janadios and Dr. Tagore. What do you do after that? A quick question I just want to confirm of our locations. Was that maze in the gardens? It's in the gardens. Okay. Um, can I go to the library and sort of, uh, of course. Yep. politely snoop about? Absolutely. You have the run of the place until it's time to go to the hunt, so. Which is like another hour or so. That's Mr. Uh I would like to activate my custom move. Which oh, could that's go right. horribly. So you have a new custom move, which we talked about on Discord. We've never talked about on the recording. And so we should go ahead and uh, read that. I'll read it for the group. The name of the move is mm, Anamnesis. <laughs> Anamnesis. 
Once per day, when you search for a memory from your long life to apply to a current situation, describe the memory and how you hope it will help, and then roll with composure. Uh, go for it. What's the memory, first of all? Um, Alexander, in his long life, has uh, had many instances where he's been in the house of people that he cannot stand and uh, has looked for ways to find things to use against them or uh, otherwise put himself at an advantage. So he's, he's drawing back on uh, a visit to a, an earl in Germany several uh, decades ago. And uh, that was a seven. Very good. And let's read the, continue reading the move. Well, on a miss, your fading memory troubles and embarrasses you and you take the, the condition foolish until next on, but no worries there. On a hit, your memory helps you. One roll during the current day can be taken with advantage. So that's what you got. And there's more benefits on a 10 or higher, but we won't deal with those right now. But yeah, so you have advantage with this memory and you can just note it and apply it whenever you wish. And Dr. Tagore, you're in the library. What sorts of books are you looking for? Ooh. Uh, what might pass for sort of medical journal or uh, medical notes on cures to vampirism, treatises on exsanguination, stuff like that. Nice. Um, go for it, reason. Eleven. Very good. I think while you're going through books, Topper Worthington and the journalist Avery Mills come into the library and Topper's asking Avery, you know, what, what do you do for a living, Mr. Mills? And he says, and as he's coming in, he says, no, oh, that's, that's very fascinating. I, I don't read the paper much myself, but I'm, I gather it's something people enjoy. Do you sometimes feel guilty? about, well, you know, sometimes the papers are deal in gossip. Do you sometimes feel guilty sort of, you know, dredging up gossipy tales and rumors about the rich? Is that something that gives you a lot of pleasure, Mr. Mills? Dr. Tagore, they say as they come in. Enjoying the library, I see, Topper says. Books are awfully decorative, don't you think? They decorate the inside of my mind. <laughs> ah, ha, ha, ha. He says, what's this you've got here? Mm, something about blood and bodies and uh, how perfectly ghoulish, Dr. Tagore. But I guess you're a doctor. That's sort of your thing. It is indeed. I do. Uh, I Almost like... Uh, an ancient seer reading entrails, I, I find there's quite a bit of wisdom to be gleaned from uh, the internal organs. He says, oh, charming. <clears throat> well, um, and he sort of gives you the book back and says, well, I'll just let you have at it. What do you know about this other guest staying at the house? Um, he has his own block of rooms in Brathwaite Hall, but we haven't laid eyes on him yet. And Avery says, oh yes, yes, I, I hear he, he goes about wearing a mask. Isn't that unusual? Oh, you know, maybe he's disfigured from some past experience serving, who knows, uh, some, some greater uh, purpose than what we understand. Topper says, well, it's just a, very eccentric collection of people here this week. Very, very, very eccentric. I mean, I mean, my brother and I are friends with Toddy, so of course we have a reason to be here, but a doctor from London, a muckraking reporter, it's all very unusual. 
that Mr. Chenadius there, he cuts quite a striking figure. I can see why Theodore would want him here. Mm -hmm. Handsome and, and uh, sorry, as handsome and upstanding a person as you will ever meet. And with that, you can go Through that eyebrow your... raise. <laughs> <laughs> you can go back to your books and I'll come give you your clue in a moment. Let's cut over to Willoughby. Willoughby, I'm going to give you your clue. And as a little bonus, because you got a 12 plus, I'm going to give you a little bonus, even though that's not really a thing on the information move, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. You start to notice that there are there's a portion of the lower level, the sub level of the house where the walls are kind of unfinished. And in fact, they are painted with faded Roman frescoes. And in particular, there's a fresco of a phalanx. This, of course, is reminiscent of the drawing that was found in Jenny Johnston's, but this is an actual like fresco of it. And your little monocle will show you that there is a clear seam in one of the walls. It can be opened or pulled back or pushed or something, it seems. All right. That seems really interesting and extremely dangerous is what that seems like to me. So I can see that there is a seam. Is it uh, a dead end sort of wall? It's just like a little basement sort of a Yeah, it looks like, it, like they, they have a bunch room of, like, that's a bunch of like crates and barrels and, and I see. carpets rolled up in there and stuff. Yeah. I see. And there's this faded fresco of the phalanx. That's your clue, by the way. Okay. I don't know what I want to do about that just now. So I think I just make note. Sure. And uh, wander back towards more living staff. Indeed. Elmore, you'll run to Elmore and he'll say, are you lost? I am, I am lost. I haven't been here in so many years and certainly never downstairs before. Which way do I? kitchens follow me follow me he's very slow so you're following him and it's like you're moving at like you know half a mile an hour here like it's very very slow i'm walking behind him so it gives me an opportunity to take several drinks of, from my flask on the way back to the kitchens he says, slowly he looks over his shoulder and says do you drink tea I do drink tea, yes. Uh, I will make you a tea. A I would like that. Tea. I would like that very much. Thank you. And continue walking slowly down mm -hmm. the hall. How long have you served Miss Brathwaite, Elnor? It must be your whole life now. For a very long time. I was. <clears throat> I was an indentured servant, an indentured mm. servant back in the that island. That was fashionable. <laughs> the island nation where my mistress is from. She freed me and I was a crew member on her vessel back in those days. That sounds most exciting. I have never really taken to sailing, a little queasy myself. Uh, there's nothing like it. Mm. The smell of fresh ocean scented air, the wax on the ship's timbers. Do I? Rum, the... freshly extracted from the cask. 
pungent and sharp in the nose. Do I get the impression that he is exactly as doddering and senile as he appears? Or do I get the sense that he might be putting on a oh, lot of airs he, to be this ancient? You're duplicitous enough to know that he's duplicitous. <laughs> <laughs> game recognizes game in this regard. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. And you continue slowly going to the kitchen. Lord White. Theodora says, I think this looks lovely on you. She adjusts the pendant. Now you have nothing to worry about, my little secret guest, my long-term secret guest, can't, can't take a bite of you, neither can the queen. How kind of you, assuming of course this works. Uh, I'm known for my generosity. No one knows this better than you, Lord White. Oh, that's true. Have you met my daughter, Tatiana? Would I have, Jason, before? Uh, probably, yeah. Probably yeah. yesterday you would have met her briefly. Probably. I'm sure she's sprouted up since I last saw her. Yeah, yeah. She says, ah, a dreadful girl. She's frankly an idiot, cruel and stupid. But she's very loyal. And that's important to me. Well, experience should uh, shift her mind. Are you going to be on the hunt today? When have I ever missed a good hunt? I don't do them myself. I'll show up later for the picnic. Well, just make sure that your uh, servant doesn't pack the lunch like last time. Oh, <laughs> you and... <laughs> <laughs> she winks and uh, what do you do when you realize Dottie's not there Dottie's not <laughs> I shoot uh, her a look like a suspicious look and then I call out for her and then probably disappear around the hedge looking for her Theodora says are you missing someone dear I did recall you talking to someone as you were making your way through the maze. It seems you've lost them or they've lost you. I've lost a, a grieving attendant. Oh, well, I wouldn't worry about it too much. The game warden will find her. No worries there. He often r roams the hedge maze? Oh, he's very good at gathering up lost things on the grounds. Well, hopefully he's careful. Like all of us who've come, we have hidden reservoirs. And yeah, I owe Dr. Tagore a clue, so let me do that now. Let's check on our clues, in fact, see kind of where we're at with things. So things in sets of three go missing, um, fresco, phalanx. Did Theodora bring that um, person who tried to poison me? The, the servant person? I that's can't who I was name. just talking to. Who that's just Elmore, me the butler. Oh, yeah. that's Elmore. Yeah, oh. he's like, let's go have tea. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Should have warned you. I just assumed that you did based on the old <laughs> mechanics. Like we've had a couple of nights. <laughs> yeah. If you ever visit Theodora, watch out for that old guy. Jason, I think I haven't typed in already, but am I typing on the wrong document, perhaps? Uh, oh, uh, maybe. I mean, I'm on the, like, very far side of the... Oh, you have it on the front. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, have, I have a column over here on the far end <laughs> as well for the mastermind thread. Um, but we can put it over here. That's fine. Uh, yeah, so then I owe you a fourth clue. And... I missed that other column somehow. That's okay. Um, because that's where I have the side characters too. It looks like those are already down. So, all right, cool. Um, let's sketch your clue. I think the clue is going to be pretty straightforward, but a little 
vague for our purposes, just so we have some flexibility on it. But essentially what you find among the books is a very, very old, and I mean really old scroll written in Latin. And knowing the former residents of this place could be relevant. All right. Um, is it a thing I can take with me? Sure. We'll do. And I think with that, we'll probably start to go into the time of the hunt. The hunt, and then the picnic, and then the nighttime festivities will begin. Who all is going to be on the hunt? Or at the hunt, at least. Defo hunting. Okay. Yeah, we'll go. I'll attend the picnic or pop in if necessary, but I'm not going. Okay. Where will you be instead during the hunt? Um, I would like to see if I could do a little bit of my day move of like housework and see if I can gather up one more clue. Oh, maybe. yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's a that's a good. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll fiddle with it a little bit, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll get you something. So that's good. Let's talk about the hunt. So the journalist is the journalist has been banned from the hunt. <laughs> he's not upper crust for one thing. He doesn't know what he's doing. And uh, he is in any case more interested in kind of snooping around probably on his own. And so why be bothered with the hunt? So nothing to see chasing foxes or birds or whatever the hell. And so Avery Mills is not there. Obviously, none of the servants are there, nor is the Limehouse Lurker, the Queen, or Clara Barton, uh, or John Brown. It's just the three of you, Toddy, Taffy, and Topper, are all there at the hunt. And Toddy and Taffy, Taffy, Aloha, Toddy and Taffy and Topper are all in there. They're all in like a uh, kind of, you know, uh, you know, like riding breeches and tall boots, you know, and like, you know, sort of like red jackets, that kind of thing, you know, very, very like kind of upper crusty looking and very beautifully presented and pristine. Did the three of you have appropriate attire for this? I assume you do not, Dr. Tagore. Willoughby would not let, oh, go ahead. I don't think so. I do regret not bringing uh, the trunk of costumes that, uh, did I get it from Periwinkle? I think I should have brought that. It's a video. It, it might have been, yeah. yeah. Uh, Willoughby would not let Mr. Gennadios go anywhere without looking avant-garde, more dashing than everybody else. I'm looking pretty masculine, I think. And uh, I've got, what is the riding breeches are the ones where like the pants flare up at the at the boot? Uh, uh, they can. I definitely have that. The three T's are not. There's those are all like snug form fitting. Well, mine are better. <laughs> I'm curious, Mr. Janadius, how have you put your own spin on the on the look on the sartorial choice today? Or perhaps Willoughby can tell us. Traditionally, I think he would be going for the like the fox hunt red, but probably in a much uh, deeper kind of crimson than the uh, the bright, bright like fire engine red that you normally see. I also imagine, tight. yeah, tight, but you probably also have some daring neckline and or cutouts somewhere in there, like perhaps something in the shoulders is loose, so you have better movement. Like when you it. arrive at the hunting grounds, you're surprised to find no horses, no guns, but the game warden does have a number of uh, crossbows <laughs> um, there in Iraq, and it's an unusual weapon. And there are also three men, common looking men, 
there as well. They're at the hunting, at the, the entrance of the hunting grounds, right at the edge of the forest. They look very, very nervous, these three men. And Tatiana says, now we all have to make a promise to each other that we're not going to tell anyone what happens here today. Do I have your words? Taffy, Topper, they nod. Lord White, Dr. Tagore, Mr. Genarios. As long as it's above board, I suppose. Well, it won't be that, Lord White. So if you need to go, you should go. Do you make it a habit of telling other people your personal business? It's not usually how I do things. <sighs> Discretion is key here, Dr. Tagore. We're going to have a fantastic experience, but it's the sort of experience that, well, oh, Scotland Yard might not be too pleased with. I'm quite good with secrets. I know you are, Mr. Genadios. I'm mentally ticking through everyone I know at Scotland Yard and <laughs> my role with them. <laughs> Lord White, are you going to be any trouble? This, this seems below me. It may well be. Like I said, you can go back and have tea with mother and join us for the picnic later. I think I shall do that. Do you actually leave though? Oh yeah, yeah haughtily. <laughs> Well, now that that's done. So we're not going to be on horses today and our weapon is a bit of an unusual choice. And so is our prey. These three gentlemen are all in very, very deep debt. And we've come to something of an agreement. If they can make it to the edge of our property before we can put a crossbow bolt in them, then I will pay off the, these debts. Don't you think that's very fair? Alexander. Yeah. He'll play with the, the crossbow, get a, a bolt in, snap it back, and, and hold it up and say, this sounds fun. Oh, good. Scar your reflection. <laughs> Dr. Tagore, you look a little pale. Yes, I, you know, a debt for, for, one such as these, I gesture at these three men, is is really paltry on our spectrum, sort of pointing at our gathered hunters. Um, I can see your sense of sport, and yet uh, it seems easy enough to forgive the debts and go deer hunting. Well, I'm going to forgive the debts if they can make it to the other side of the property. I'm even giving them a head start. I think that's very fair, don't you think? Taffy and Topper agree. I'm gonna start cleaning my fingernails with uh, Sally No Face's scalpel. Well, <clears throat> so we'll give them a head start. We'll count to say a hundred. If you feel too queasy, Dr. Tagore, you can be the counter if you'd like. Sure. And I forgot to mention, we have a secret special bit of game running about in the forest right now. You get bonus points if you bring that one in. And what should we be on the lookout for? A very, very confused young woman. 
wandering about in the woods. Understood. And she's like, all right then, start the count, Dr. Tagore. The three of you, I suggest you start running. And they turn and run into the woods. One, two, three. Three of them are looking at you like, Mr. Jadius, what are you doing? I think he's he's you know testing the weight of the crossbow and, and aiming down the sight, getting making sure he's set. Good. Let's cut back over to Willoughby. So Willoughby, what are you up to now? Well, I think that given given that most of the guests are out of the house, I will be able to roam the estate fairly regularly throughout the house whereas uh, as a servant I might be oh why are you here go back to your you know go back downstairs that kind of thing um I'm hoping in doing a little snooping I find perhaps um Ms. Brathwaite's study and I want to go rummage through some papers I think that's fair uh mm -hmm. yeah that works um so you're in the study it mm -hmm. is Everything is done up in that sapphire blue that she loves. Wallpaper, the cushions, that kind of thing. Um, and you see her desk and you do see some, uh, a box, a tray of, of papers and things. Um, she does do her business in the mornings, so, mm -hmm. um, but it's afternoon now, so she's not here. What do you do? Um, I imagine that I am once again trying to find a um, like a secret latch in the drawer, desk drawer that opens something else. Like if she already knows how to cure vampirism, I'm wondering if she has any record of it or thoughts about it um, or notes that she's taken um, that I'd find in her study, either to lord over our queen or perhaps eventually cure her or make sure that nobody cures her. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Make the, I'm gonna have it be with composure because I think Elsie is in the next room over. Mm -hmm. so, dusting. That is a nine. Very good. You are rummaging through the papers, going to the desk. There's no secret hatches or anything, but you do just find lots of papers and things. And in one of them, you find what appears to be a very, very old drawing of a group of people turned away from a man standing on a pedestal. The man is rendered very muscular and Adonis-like, but his face is a sun. And the clue here is quite simply that perhaps the man in the sun mask has something to do with this. Mm-hmm. But you got a nine. <clears throat> oh, I rolled a nine. I'm gonna oh. add my composure for uh, eleven and okay. just avoid whatever so that good. was. Good. I don't okay. want that. No, thank you. <laughs> you're all good. Four, five. <laughs> very good. Very good. Lord White. You can discover really quickly where Theodora is. She's taking tea right now in the salon, but you can go do anything you want. What do you do? Until the picnic, at least. Remind me what we can do with the void. Oh, the void walker move? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a custom move. I don't know if it, it made it. Oh, it's, it's in the moves reference tab. Uh, when you have the cosmic passage marked and use an object of power to attune to the fragrant void, you roll sensitivity. And basically it allows you to travel to the fragrant void. <laughs> so, But when I get insight into the threat, would that be a clue? Uh, yes, I give, on a hit, I give you two clues, in fact. And so, what is an object of power? You have one, it's the weight of the camera. Oh, damn, I should have asked for it. Or maybe it's just in his room. I'm sure it's in whoever's room, yeah. I think I will uh, enter unbidden <laughs> to do that. <laughs> Gonna use the Waitley camera, huh? I like it. You uh, find Willoughby in the room, wondering why you're going through Mr. Gennadios' things. <laughs> oh, that's good. Let's have that scene with the two of we you. We had the same thought, Willoughby. <laughs> Lord White, I thought you were at the hunt. No, it was distasteful. And I well, almost spit. That... <laughs> Tati has always been a very cruel creature. What was she hunting? Oh, just humans setting oh. men loose. Well, you she actually didn't to... see that part. <laughs> oh, oh, well, all I know is there's no horses, and without horses, there's no hunt, at least not a good one. That makes perfect sense to me. What brings you here? Well, I thought that I might try to gain a bit of uh, insight from the void. And there's only um, one particular object I know of that could be of service. Truthfully, I didn't expect to see you here, but uh, you you might come along if it's of interest. Perhaps you'd enjoy a third. Well, and Theodora comes into the room. Sorry, I was walking by and just overheard your conversation. <laughs> well, Lord White, I am happy to accompany you, but I'm afraid I do not know where he's put that camera. Hmm, where could he have ever hidden it? Theodora says, oh, I know where it is. And she goes through. It's it's behind Willoughby's back at this point. This wasn't like yeah. I was, <laughs> no. Um, uh, shall we, ladies? I'm very curious about this. What is the process here, Lord White? What is the void even? I'm very intrigued. Yeah. I'm not sure that you're able to come along. It might be a little bit harmful for you, Theodore. You might want to go and get some tea instead. Oh. Lord White, it would be most distressing to me to know that you've been somewhere that I haven't been. I don't know that my, I don't know that my sense of self-importance could stand that. Well, we lords love to roam. I guess it's your skin. Hmm. So how does this work? What do we do? Um... I defer to Lord's white directions and all of this. I want to go, but I've never gone. <laughs> do, we, do we take a picture or something? We can surely find something more aesthetically pleasing than Mr. Genarios's room. Where do you suggest? Oh, well, perhaps the music room. Fair sure. I'm trying to remember how we did it in the first place. Wasn't there a mirror involved? Um, I mean, I think at this point, because you have Void Walker, you can just you just attune in however you wish to do it to open up the. the oh, the, yeah. You well, I think uh, the ritual from before. Right. Well, I think that um, yeah, taking the picture with the Waitley camera would be cool. But I like the trope of walking through mirrors quite a bit. So if there's a large one in the music room or something, that would be fun. So you're She's talking like aiming the camera at the mirror and somehow projecting the void onto it? Yeah, like maybe taking a picture of the mirror endows it with some particular properties and then we walk through it. I like it, I think it's great. So she says, well, if we need a mirror, 
I have a very, very prominent one in the room that my little guest stays in. It helps keep him in check in case he wakes up in the middle of the day. The mirror helps. Yes, he's terrified of them. Interesting. Well, my curiosity is piqued, whatever you will be. Am I to understand that we would be going into your guest's room to use that mirror with yes. them sleeping? He, he's asleep. It's fine. Uh huh. Uh huh. He's Willoughby's just making real eyes at Lord White here. <laughs> or we could go into the Queen's room. She has a similar mirror, but I'm afraid we'd have to get rid of that nurse, Miss Barton. Trust me, it wasn't my idea to bring her here. That was Mr. Brown's coup d'etat. I'm thinking it would be, you know, all right, Willoughby, because, uh, like, out of out of character, I'm thinking that then we could then tell Mr. Genadios where that room is if he wanted a little bit of comeuppance later on. Understood. Begrudgingly, Willoughby decides that it might be okay to take a photograph in the bedroom of a sleeping vampire with our arch nemesis. Sounds great. Definitely. <laughs> Going into another world, another dimension, I think that'd be great. Let's cut back over to the hunting grounds. 99. Nine. 90. <laughs> eventually, so 90, I start reach. cleaning the scalpel very carefully. Toddy will eventually just be like, 100, go. And like, and, and you're off. Stalking into the woods, going in different directions. Everyone kind of splits up. Do you split up, Mr. Janios, or do you stay close to someone? I'm going to stay close to Topper. Okay, good. And Dr. Tagore, are you going to grab a crossbow and join, or are you going to stay out there? Yes, I, I don't know that I'll use it, but I will grab a crossbow and join. And this is interesting because I don't think Toddy thinks that's what you're going to do. So she won't, so they won't know you're on the hunt or you're, you're there with a weapon, right? They'll think you're back behind. So that's very wise. And let's take a five minute break. Mr. Genadios, you and Topper get into the woods a little bit, you know, kind of looking around for these, for, for one of these, the, the prey. And at a certain point, Topper says, Mr. Genadios, I have to say it, and I'm very sorry. I'm, we Americans are probably a little more forward than your British sensibilities can handle, but I have to tell you, you're the most beautiful man I've ever laid eyes on. Mr. Worthington, it's... Please, your call me Topper. We'll see. In truth, I was looking forward to some time alone with you. Oh, really? He says with a smile. Well, here we are now. Indeed. And I think... Uh, S seduction would probably be unnecessary at this point, but uh, he would take advantage of the interest. Yeah, he will. He will basically like, you know, like kind of go in for a kiss. Alexander is on board. So Mr. Genadios and Topper are making out of the woods. <laughs> um, Dr. Tagore, what are you doing? You're not aware of any of that. I want to, to the extent that I can, try and trail Toddy and see what she does. Like kind of in the distance, just sort of, if I can remain unseen, do so. You will come Not upon... Having skill in the woods. You will come upon Toddy at a certain point and you'll... She doesn't, she's not aware of you. She's focused dead ahead. And she says, ah, there you are. 
she raises up the crossbow and you see one of the men sort of their legs sticking out of out of a hedge and they think they're hidden but they're not she's about to take them out what do you do I'm gonna interfere, uh, you know, like, a, oh, Toddy, there you are. I've been, I've been lost. Where is the hunt? And then, like, a really loud, <laughs> like, look over like here. Like, it's a day move. Um, what are you afraid is gonna happen if you fail? <laughs> she could turn and accidentally discharge her crossbow at me. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Roll with composure. What do I have for that? Um, Sorry, I have to look up the composure step. There we are. Ooh, a five. She does. She turns around and just whips around. The bolt goes flying and just plunges deep into your neck. There's a spray and you collapse on your knees slump down the blood rapidly pouring soaking the loam and she walks up to you and she puts her boot on your face and says well i guess i don't have to worry about you keeping your mouth shut now do i Unless you mark the Janus mask, that's the end of Dr. Tagore. Oh. Give me a second to think on this, because I can see a kind of, of theatric thing where Dottie witnesses this from behind a tree. I think that'd be super cool, actually. Yeah. Especially if you were thinking about already retiring Dr. Tagore, right? Yeah, it feels like he's getting close to, to having served his literary purpose or role-playing purpose. Um, man. Think on it. Mm -hmm. Lord White, let's have the role. <laughs> With sensitivity, of course. Excellent. I'm putting you at disadvantage because of drawn with void. I think it makes you sloppy. Does the camera give any benefits? Oh, if you mark it, it'll cancel it out. Yeah. If if Drew's okay with you marking it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so normal roll? Normal dice plus sensitivity. It's flat. Ooh, that's a four. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Let's see what happens on a miss. There may not be anything on it, but I just want to check. On a miss. Oh. Unmark the cosmic passage and then cross it off your sheet. Oh, snap. I can use a mask? You can. I think I would like that as much as I would enjoy watching Theodora mock me fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> so instead, it's going to be a seven to nine. Uh, you'll travel to the Fragrant Void and gain keen insight to a third of your choice. I'll reveal two clues. However, because it's not a 10 plus, an entity from the void might bother you. <laughs> um, oh. So, but give us a scene. What does it look like? Mark your mask and then give us a scene. Can I mark the one uh, for the threat? Oh, Mask of the Sun. Yes, of course. I think that'd be great. Interesting. Okay. Um, it's actually really well-timed because you don't know what this one does. It's a new Mask of the Sun and it's very well-timed for what you're doing. So Excellent. Yeah. I, I wanted to see what it would do. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think we just sort of like creep along a corridor that probably isn't even lit with like a single candle, uh, candle burning. And I imagine it's the side of the house that hasn't got hit by the sun yet and we creep into the this this boy's uh, bedroom <laughs> apparently with a large i'm uh, guessing it's not like a vanity mirror but like a full body uh type mirror 
probably with like fancy gilded edges and, and whatnot. And we take a picture, which is like, yeah, I guess it's one of those really old cameras, right? Like with like, we would make a pretty big flash ostensibly. Uh, yeah, well, it uses like a little flash powder thing, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. hopefully the boy is uh, tucked in. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as the, I think the, there's like a slow motion-ish scene with the flash going out. And that's like our time to walk into the mirror. And by the time the bulb burns low, or whatever flash it is burns low, we're all through the mirror. Good. And at the moment of the flash, we cut away to a part of the house you haven't seen yet. It's comfortable. There are silk cushions and mats laid out in this room and everything is in a beautiful amber and gold and yellow. And we see the man in the sun mask laying on his cushions, smoking opium pipe from the little hole in the mask, the pipe fits. And he removes the pipe and he stands up and he says to the camera, to all of us breaking the fourth wall, he says, walk with me. Let us roam back in time across the ancient seas, back in time when the spirits walked, when I was new and the old gods held court. And he removes the sun mask though we don't see what's behind it. Upon removing the mask, everything changes. Mr. Genadios, you are making out with young Topper and you realize while you're embracing him, that something has changed in the environment. Something's different. You're in an ancient place. How do you know that? Even this far out from the city, there's still the scent of the industrialization in, in this area, and it's just gone. Dr. Tagore, are you bleeding out on the ground? Yeah, I think I think it wasn't what I expected this morning, but I think uh, it's a good way to, way to go with the story here. Um, the last if you're all right see. with this, sorry, no, no, go ahead. if you're all right with this, uh, let's have Toddy, you know, walk away from the scene and <clears throat> Toddy, uh, having witnessed this from behind a tree walk up and, uh, you know, Tagore's got the bolt through his throat, trying to gurgle out some last words. I'm picturing Dottie withdraws the, the bolt from his throat and Tagore just gurgles out, Barry Winkle, and he's gone. <laughs> um, and I guess you have to make Dottie now. Yeah, uh, Dottie's already made. Um, okay, good. Yeah. Two thoughts. One, can I give her a crossbow bolt, bolt for her personal quarters? Sure, go for it. Yeah. And then you'll get I more actually, things later, but for now, that's good. Yeah. I had uh, thought to give her the Quicksilver voice, and thus far she's been rather inarticulate, but it sort of seems a bit poetic that uh, Tugor shot through the throat. And now uh, she finds her voice. Yeah. It finds her voice. Maybe a little bit of marmalade on the tongue was what it took to, yeah. to activate her uh, articulation. Dude. I don't know. Um, does that seem all right? I love it. All right. Dottie, you look up from the bloody pool 
that your dead creator is laying in. And you see that the place has changed. The trees are much taller than you remember. And there are strange insects and small beasts fluttering about. And there's something looming over you, something taller even than the trees, something with terrible, great, orange glowing eyes staring down at you. What do you do? It's evening, right? No, it's middle of the day. Middle of the day. But the tree okay. cover is so thick, you can see the glowing eyes. Okay. It's dark where you're at, but it's daytime. Try and keep essentially a shade trees cover between me and uh, the eyes. And I think. Uh, go in pursuit of Toddy, uh, try and follow her. Good. Lord White, Willoughby. Theodora as well. You are standing in what appears to be circle of stones in an open field. But that mirror is hanging perfectly in the air in front of you. You can see the camera on the other side. You can see the man in the, in the sun mask on the other side examining the camera. Theodora says, how very strange. I feel that we are on my property, but it is not as I would guess it to be. It feels older somehow. Well, for starters, I don't see any buildings. Looking around this field, is there a well, a tree line, uh, a you know, a monument, a mountain, a landmark of any kind? There's a tree line for sure. Mm -hmm. Very, very tall trees. And something rustling the tops of them. And this is through the mirror, like we haven't gone through it yet. You can see on the other side of the mirror. The other side of the mirror appears to be the man in the sun mask and the weight lake camera, indeed the room that you left in. Okay. I invite the man, the, the, the man with the mask to come through with the motion. And he just shakes his head. If Willoughby walks up to the mirror and crosses the circle line and then reaches out its solid surface temperatures, can I touch the mirror? Can I pass through it? It appears you can pass through it. It has a- Get a couple of fingers in up to the wrist. Yeah, it breaks like, like, okay. water, like the surface of water. Yeah. Okay. Am I drawn to a particular place being drawn to the void? No, you feel right at home. Well, I suppose there's only onward to go. But onward to where, Lord White? It's a field. Past the field. Into the trees? 
Why not? All right, then. Perhaps we'll find a real hut there, and I look at Theodora. Well, that's refreshing, Lord White. I really do enjoy your humor, and I can't ever laugh in polite company. But now that it's just the three of us, I find your wit quite refreshing. Here's your first clue. Mm. This place, this land, has two sons. You'll notice it first, Willoughby. Too bad I didn't bring my astrolabe. <laughs> <laughs> um, being a, that this is the condition that Willoughby has had as a character for the longest. Um, and I've also picked up the ability to commune with the Greco, the second-sided boy in my dreams. And while I haven't necessarily done that on camera, I think that Willoughby's obsessive compulsion to find the void has been occupying a lot of their very drunken nights. And I'm curious if as that progressed, if I found out anything about the Waitley camera that would shed light on the fact that we are not in the void that they described to me when you know the crew went the first time and I was so very jealous. This is, does not look like that. I was expecting a Leviathan. So would I know or could I think back to discover why that would be? I think it fits probably well enough to say that as has been hinted at before, the void itself is just a conduit between the worlds. Perfect. Yours was okay. a short journey, but a journey. Well, shall we, ladies? Mm -hmm. So there's, sorry, I missed uh, in the chat, you said the scent, it, it smells like something in particular? Um, the void smells like warm spices, but this place doesn't necessarily. Oh, we're now in another world for all effective purposes. Another right. time is probably time? Not accurate. Maybe, okay. yeah. But it's a little, it's a little, a little squishy. So. Mm -hmm. Mr. Genadios, how does Topper taste? Like, uh, spearmint overlaying something uh, less nice, like too much time with a H-Y. He pulls away from you and he says, Mr. Genadios, you're incredible. Can I call you Alexander? I don't think so, not yet. He says, well, um, I suppose we should get back to it, huh? We'll have a week back. to explore this. Oh, you seem to be in a hurry. And as he's trying to stall, he'll be looking around, seeing what what's different. Mm. The trees are different, they're bigger. You see fauna and flora, you don't recognize. Whatever this place is, it's either alien or very, very old, older even than you. He'll say to, uh, to Topper, I believe, well, my kisses are usually effective at transporting one somewhere else. They don't normally take me with them. And he's, he's so like caught up in you, he's not even noticing this stuff. And he just says, well, we better get back to it. I have my eye on, well, I'd like to bag at least one more bit of prey than my brother, bragging rights and all that. Interesting. Go then. You 
aren't coming with me? I believe I'm here to witness something. Oh, and he wanders off, looking backwards, stepping backwards. And he's, as he steps backwards, you can see something large and shadowy rising up from behind him. What do you do? Alexander will just uh, just step back uh, against the tree and look up, intrigued. We just hear terrible screaming as whatever whatever it is tears Topper to pieces. Mark the reflection, or scar the reflection. When it's all done, you just see Topper's tall leather boots sitting in a pool of blood. Uh, Alexander will uh, Yeah, he's, he's going to call out and say, there's another one out there, just as tasty. There's no reply. Dottie, you're going after Dottie. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna do when you find her? Well, <laughs> I've got this bloody bolt that uh, might need to be returned to sender. Indeed, indeed. And Lord White and Willoughby, where, what are you hoping to find right now? Where are you hoping to go? I was thinking it would be like a um, sort of inverted world or something like that of this place or like a history of this place. So I'm, I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe just holding that thought in my mind and going like searching for a place that would be synchronous with this house or something in order to find more. I mean, will it be, you would be able to pinpoint roughly where that fresco would have been. That's precisely what I was thinking since uh, Ms. Brathwaite will not call her a lady uh, because she said that she felt like she was standing on her own land mm -hmm. that I might be able to kind of take a look about and see if there is something built into a hillside or into the earth dug in. Maybe we find the temple like way earlier. Yeah, this would be this would be even long before the, the long orphans before. of Apollo, right? Okay. Got there. Unless they knew how to get here too. Who knows? But in any case, yeah, I think that's good. So that's what you're looking for. And you get to roughly that place and you see what appears to be just a hole in the ground. Pitch black. And we were told that the uh, there were caves, right? That's where they they had all. Um, That's where they set up their alleged temple. Yeah. I wouldn't have then, put on my mask too. <laughs> you can. Um, well, this is here. Um, this would give us a very good location correlating to the house, but Mrs. Ms. Brathwaite's right there. And I thought we were gonna do this without her knowing about it. So Willoughby is just looking at this hole in the ground and saying absolutely nothing. I don't know. I doubt anything that we would do on these grounds would escape her notice anyway. She knew where the camera was, <laughs> even. That's pretty granular detail. <laughs> well, Lord White, you are far more familiar with 
her comings and goings than I. It just seems, I'm sorry to talk like this in front of you, Lady Brathwaite. Very sorry. Would you care to go down into this hole in the ground? Theodora says, I think I know where it goes. Hmm. I'll bet you do. Lead on. She says, well, I guess it's going to be one of those hike up your skirt kind of days. As she does so, sliding into the hole. It's kind of like at an angle, you know, you kind of slide down in. Do you follow? Oh, yes, I'm dressed for this already. Willoughby is probably more practically dressed, but Theodora sliding into this hole as she was dressed for a hunting picnic. That's, that's excellent. Yes, I follow. Dottie. You hear Tatiana's voice over your shoulder and a click click of the crossbow. She says, there you are. You must be the one that the game warden told me would be roaming around here. What are you going to do with that? She says to the bloody crossbow bolt in your hand. Oh, I have, I had mixed feelings for my, my brother, my creator, uh, but I certainly could have used more time to resolve those on my own terms. Your interference was, was not required, not asked for, not needed. I may have murdered myself one day, but that was for me to do, not you. Hmm. Well, and at that, she raises the crossbow, takes aim, and yeah. I think we'll just cut the session there mm -hmm. a little early, but I like that as a little ending. There's no dawn or end of session stuff, except for stars and wishes. So let's do stars and wishes. Wants to go first. I I really liked um, yeah the the way that it turned out for Tagore and the fact that Dottie is wearing like grieving clothes already. It's just it's very synchronous. <laughs> it's it's cool when sort of emergent elements come together like that. Well, yeah, um, star for the like finding her voice when Doctor Tagore gets. Yeah, also Hit in great. The throat with a crossbow bolt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I just I really liked all of the um discussion at, at breakfast quite a bit. It was it was very fun and uh biting. <laughs> and um I really liked the whole uh way that the Waitley camera thing is is playing out as well with the the uh, Sun Man, which would probably be my uh, wish, is to find out more about what is up with that fellow, <laughs> ostensible fellow, anyway. And um, yeah, I I look forward to taking care of Theodora. However, that the mechanics work in that way, I'm delighted to find out. Basically, once you've resolved the threat, you can deal with Theodora as you wish. So. Um, I have a couple of stars that I wrote down. Um, Elnor's interjection, uh, Jason, this is just for you. That rum interjection was a oh, oh, for Elnor, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Elnor, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, super funny. And as was um, Brian, you're continuing to count as slowly as possible. That was a nice little cutback I liked. Um, Fraser, your description of how the Waitley camera interacted with the mirror was painted beautifully and like a really, I didn't love that you were just inviting Jason to sick a vampire on us, but the way you described just the, um, the flash and the timing of us having to hurry through in that moment, that was really cool. 
Um, I also, I kind of really liked seeing Alexander get, I mean, pre-medieval, but it's that like hunting for humans and more carnal than we've seen him before. And it's starting to uh, unravel some of the character there. And that's fun. Um, I also liked that um, we kept having echoes in the night, even though we no longer have the phases. So like the two eyes of the suns and the description of when we moved worlds was kind of echoing the Leviathan's eyes and the previous time that they were in the void. And that once we realized that we were in later on in time, then Alexander had a bitter taste of the other kind of time, you know, that kind of stuff just kept happening. And, and the I two think that's really orange eyes at the forest yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been a really interesting way that changed the way we gameplay, I guess, a little bit. And it's a fun part of the game for me for sure. So uh wishes. I am just excited to see how this all plays out. I am on the edge of my seat. Yeah, for me, stars, I really loved. I also like the breakfast scene quite a lot. I like the whole like kind of just unfurling the characters of this threat. Um, it had almost like a English country manor mystery feel to it, you know, like an Agatha Christie vibe or whatever. Um, but of course that's not what it is, but it kind of had that vibe. And I loved, um, I don't know, I just thought everyone did a great job of like kind of getting settled into this environment you know it is such a different environment from the other threats from the rest of the game right and so it's kind of it was really enjoyable to watch everyone just sort of like get settled in like you know will it be kind of like exploring the servants quarters angle and dr tagore doing research but like in a different place and um and lord white's interactions with theodora were terrific and um and uh, yeah i just kind of like where all that's going and I kind of like how everyone is sort of settled. And then it got disrupted by this, like, this whatever happened, this interaction between the Waitley camera and the man in the sun mask, uh, and specifically choosing to use the mask of the sun <laughs> was, the, was the big one. Um, that's just been all really, really enjoyable. Uh, star for Dottie and Dottie's introduction as a player character, really, really good. And Dr. Tagore's, um, I always kind of like it when like characters you, are really, really familiar with have these completely unremarkable sudden ends. <laughs> and like, that's kind of, we kind of got that. It's like a, it's like our Game of Thrones moment, you know, like in a way, uh, which I think is pretty cool. And yeah, it just the sort of like, um, I like how Mr. Genadios is evil is playing out in this one. Like it's, it's evil, but like, it's sort of, you're like rooting for the evil, <laughs> you know, like, like he just didn't help Topper. He just let Topper get murdered, you know? And we don't know if Mr. Janios was gonna actually hunt people, but he seemed game. <laughs> so like, yeah, it's all just been very, very interesting. And my wishes, I'm very excited to see how the Lurker gets involved. I'm very excited to see Queen Victoria and the nurse, Clara Barton. Um, just kind of, inter I'm interested to see how much longer this little, dimensional hopping thing lasts. I know how long it lasts, but you all don't, but it'll be fun to see how it ends. And yeah, yeah, it's just, I'm excited. On my list, I have uh, Lord White just, just saying no to the hunt. Like you get all geared up and then you're, no, that's, that's too far, no. And that was a great character moment. Um, also will it be uh the elmore walk of course but uh also just trying to hide the camera behind your back like where could it be hmm let's look somewhere else um so i appreciated willoughby still trying to defend alexander's property even when he wasn't there and uh dr tagore's death was just that great shocking moment in you know season finale you don't expect it to come but then it comes uh and sad Alexander will be a little sad, more than with Ives. Sorry. Um, wishes, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to where this goes. Alexander is definitely going to take a more um, 
more active role now that the the thing has hopefully been sated and won't be uh, so hungry. He'll try and figure out where he is and what's going on, and and see if he can't get rid of the other brother because uh, he has a plan. Intriguing. Ah. Yeah. The stars were kind of repetitive. They've been said already. The the Elmore Walk, as it's been called now, <laughs> was terrific. Um, and your characterization of both Elmer and Elsie, uh, Jason were excellent, I thought. Um, uh, what else? Um, oh, uh, through that custom move, the anam anamnesis is uh, really fascinating. I've been trying, like seeing the custom move as an option for all the characters in my brain, I've been kind of like, what would a good custom move be? And it's really nice to see that. Um, I'm still kind of, this is the only game I've ever played with a playbook as a method and uh, still kind of wrapping my brain around what it is. It's, it's neat, but um, in trying to add to a playbook, I, I just don't know what to do. So it was good to see that. It's really nice. Uh, that's it for now, I think. Uh, was that everybody for Star Smishes? I thought of another thing, but it's selfish. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> when I say uh, Lord... Lords, we love to robe. That's a line from Streets of Arklo, which I was thinking of the entire time. Uh, uh, Van um, hey, Morrison, yeah, uh, line. And I recommend anyone go listen to that song because it's got very deep vibes for me of this episode. Hmm. Well, the little uh, the little speech that the man in the sun mask gave. That's a line from Penny Dreadful. Um, it's a line from the second episode of Penny Dreadful. It's what the medium says before they they do the seance. She says those exact words, so it's where I lifted it from. But um, and that's that's from the that's it's it's a variation of the original Mask of the Sun, which I don't know if you all got to do before that threat was taken off the table. But the original one just has you narrate a dream of of like. The primordial world right but uh here you could actually do it you get to be in it so um yeah i think i just have one game related question more mechanical and now that we're in the mastermind sort of stage as opposed to um a day or a night phase but i don't know if we need to ask that on camera or not okay we can do it later it's fine mm -hmm. um anything else before we go Okay, well then I shall stop the recording now.